Man, A Hat in Time is one of my absolute favorite games. I mentioned it back in my original review for the game a while back, but it bears repeating that it can't be understated just how important this game is to me, and the impact I truly believe it had on this industry as a whole. Which is also why I was pretty surprised to find out that it turns out I missed an entirely new DLC pack for the game released in November of 2021. Whoops. Creator DLC! It's a new form of additional content for A Hat in Time starting off with Vanessa's Curse, which is the main topic for today's video, and it's a pretty cool concept. With Gears for Breakfast providing support in terms of promotion, QA, support, and feedback, as well as an avenue for modders to create larger projects than they normally would be able to, while also being able to get a kickback financially at the same time. This isn't paid mods, it's not like a Bethesda cash shop situation, which is what I've heard a couple concerns over, at least as of now. These are full-fledged DLC packs, adding on to the established lore of the game, while giving new creative ways to play the game in that process. Just in this case, it's being handled by a community so Gears for Breakfast can maintain support for the game and keep it alive while focusing their efforts on other projects at the same time. And given the small size of the company, this actually makes a lot of sense. Look, they're an indie dev, they don't have the means to keep making new DLC and new projects at the same time. You can access the creator's DLC from the TV in the main hub world, giving you a list of available content you can play. And it is worth noting you will be paying a little bit extra for these packs as they release, even if you have the ultimate edition of the game, which, you know, it's fine. In the case of Vanessa's Curse, this is like three bucks Canadian, and like I mentioned previously, the developers are getting a kickback on this, so I can justify it a little bit better than if it was, say, like something outside of a season's pass. With information I gathered, it's something like a 50-50 split between Gears for Breakfast and developers for the DLC, so that's pretty cool. Now, as of now, you're only able to really get these packs on the Steam version of the game, at least at the time of recording. But it makes sense, even if I do think Vanessa's Curse would be, like, awesome on the Switch version or something, just because of how easy it is to pop in and out of. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, if I were to compare the first piece of Creator's DLC, Vanessa's Curse, to anything currently in A Hat in Time, I would say it actually shares a lot of similarities in a lot of ways to seal the deal. And all that without the crippling war flashbacks. It looks to be an answer to a shortcoming of the game itself, and it expands upon something that is already there. With Seal the Deal answering the shortcomings of difficulty of the main game by showing us the devs are sadistic psychopaths. And in the case of Vanessa's Curse, answering the shortcomings of the online party mode that was added with the Nakusa Metro DLC in 2019. See, look, online party is lots of fun, and I can't deny that. But it really suffered a bit by just being a gimmick. It wasn't a whole lot else. It wasn't really a great way to play through the game because having 49 other hat kids running around is pure chaos. And on top of it, once the novelty of that chaos wore off, I feel like a lot of people just went back to having the online mode turned off, even if they stuck around playing levels back. It was this cool idea, but it wasn't really expanded upon enough to really knock it out of the park. It just kind of stayed in this territory of being this fun, quirky thing. Vanessa's Curse is purely an expansion to that online party mode developed by Jasmine Stevens, who was recently acquired by Minomi Park of Slime Rancher fame, and Wordy, who recently threw a baguette and has some awesome artwork on his Twitter. Seriously, dude. Like, if you're watching, uh, get that stuff in that gallery, man. Like, it looks awesome. Like, it's actually really sick. Vanessa's Curse finally gives players a way to compete with each other in a game mode that is incredibly addictive, while also providing incentive to keep playing online through rewards for performing well in it. As for story, the abridged version goes like this. In Vanessa's curse, you end up in a new area of Subcon Forest, and are tasked by Snatcher to steal crowns for Vanessa as revenge against her. See, Snatcher was with Vanessa once upon a time, and they fell out bad. Real bad. After she saw him buying flowers from another woman for her and assumed the worst. Vanessa went batshit crazy, got cool ice powers, and dumped the prince in a basement where he died and then some, eventually becoming the Snatcher. He's kind of miffed about the whole left to die thing, and beyond waging war with her for control of the forest, he takes delight in messing with her. She has a lot of crowns just laying around, and Snatcher wants them just to tick her off a little bit. There's honestly not a whole lot here in terms of writing, but what's here is extremely well done. And it does a good job of tying everything back together to the main story. It legitimately feels like just another part of the story of this world. Like I said before, this is a true expansion to this game, and these expansions to the lore help grow the world and the game itself. On top of it, I have to give huge kudos to Vinton Bruno and Pikmin Girl for their vocal performances. I'm gonna be honest, for the most part, if I didn't listen to these voices back to back, you would think they were the originals. They really nail these characters down and they just, they did a phenomenal job really making it seamless in between the main game and this DLC. 
After you get a bit of lore, you get a chance to go through a quick tutorial on how to play this game mode, which quickly explains the mechanics, and then you're pretty much set out loose in the world. Vanessa's Curse has this little hub world available with some secrets here and there, and it's pretty cool. Snatcher gets mad if you hit him. And you should hit him. You should hit him a lot, that rap bass. You can also change music in this area using records obtained from playing the regular game. Queue up for the game mode, of course, or just chill, or change your lobby if you want. By default, if you're not online going in, it seems to just toss you wherever the most players are. But there are a handful of dedicated areas solely meant to just be for Vanessa's Curse. Both with modded and unmodded lobbies, with the modded servers having access to, well, some mods. Though I think this is mostly cosmetic, as I'll get to shortly. The developers honestly recommend using the Handtime Discord to get some games going, but to be real with you, once there's more than a couple of people playing in any given lobby, I've actually found it generally just starts filling up pretty quickly on its own. And in no time, you have a group of six or more playing, and that's a pretty good number. But your mileage may vary here, and that's depending on where you are, what time it is, and all that fun stuff. Once you're queued up with two or more people, a countdown starts, and at the end of that countdown, anyone who's queued up will be teleported by Snatcher to Vanessa's second manor. This manor is a lot bigger than what you might remember from the main game, and there's a lot more to do here, especially considering the game knows you have all the hats available, meaning that the level is designed with that in mind. After everyone loads in, you get a new countdown timer, and you're free to split up, and you might want to do so. After that countdown is up, crowns will start spawning, and Vanessa, deciding this time not to make everyone shoot themselves, takes a hands-off approach and instead curses one player at random. That player's objective is to curse the others by touching them, and the others are tasked with getting all the crowns before every player is cursed. It's super simple, but it's highly addictive, and it really takes using all of your skills and abilities, along with some quick thinking to get away from cursed players or capture people if you are cursed. And if you're having a hard time, there is a roulette wheel that goes off partway through the round designed to help aid the losing team. All of this combined with the manor opening up more and more the more players you have in a round, and how that changes how both teams approach their objectives, makes for a truly exciting experience. Especially with the fluid movement of a hat in time, and I'm definitely glad that everything made it over here, and there's nothing missing from the main game, and everything's exactly the same as it is when you're playing single player or regular multiplayer. Did that hat kid just bonk her dumb head? Bonk, 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 Yeah, it's worth mentioning quick that a lot of hat kid's badges are disabled here, with the exception primarily of the hookshot badge. It, it makes sense balance-wise, but man, does it trip me up. I'm so used to using the no bonk at this point that I actually needed to adjust quite a bit early on. It's also worth noting that while we're kind of ragging on some things, that the roulette wheel spins are a little whack. Like, some are fine, sure, but then other times it'll just spawn everyone in the opening area as the cursed player's right behind you, and generally if that pops off, the cursed players just win most of the time. On top of all that, this mode had a really rocky launch, which, to the credit of the devs and Gears for Breakfast, was addressed and very quickly, but it is worth noting. Both to acknowledge that there were problems, and to show that both sides were dedicated towards addressing those issues as quickly as possible. With Gears for Breakfast even going out of their way to make adjustments to the online party mode to make Vanessa's Curse a better experience overall. With that said, a couple bugs squeaked on through, and they are pretty jarring. Every so often, you'll end up with every crown spawning in one place, and it led me to believe someone was actually just hacking the casual child wrangling simulator. But on the flip side, luckily it doesn't crop up that often, and luckily you can get back in the game pretty quick if it does. And with that said, outside of these occasional bugs and wishing for more maps maybe, it would be cool to see like areas designed on other levels with their own lore or something. The overall experience is awesome, and none of these things really hinder it too much. Hell, I look at this as my current way just to go kill some time, actually. It's my go-to, like, hey, I got an hour and I need to do something just to kill that hour kind of game now. It's a lot of fun and really well designed. There's incentives for everyone to always be giving it their all through crowns or tagging players, creating this cool sense of camaraderie between both teams. And on top of it, they added Among Us stickers, so I have the roll sound stuck in my skull for the rest of my natural and unnatural life. Very cool. It's so awesome to see this game mode have its own little community around it with people dedicated towards getting hundreds upon hundreds of crowns for Snatcher over time. And I really hope that doesn't change anytime soon, and I don't think it will. I love seeing one of my absolute favorite games of all time thriving. And if Creator DLC means we're going to keep getting experiences like this was, I truly look forward to a really bright future ahead. 
Anyway, I'm going to avoid getting sappy on you guys. I'm going to go stand in a field. That's, that's, that's it. That's the video. I'm going to go. See you. Thanks.